Uh, morning, Miller. Um, could you talk a bit about a guy on the other side of the ball on your team, Dylan Moses? Uh, you see him, you've seen him in practice for for years. What's he do well? What stands out about him? His leadership and his play on the field. I think. Um, well, good morning, <laughs> and uh, I think Dylan's a, a great guy to have on your team. Um, besides the fact that he's an outstanding player, an outstanding athlete, um, he does everything right on and off the field. And I couldn't be more thankful to have a guy like that on my team and to be able to play with him. Um, it's been it's been fun playing with him the last three years, and I'm super thankful to experience Sue against such a good player in practice every day. Next is Patrick Murphy. Pat. Miller, looking at Ohio State's defense and how they've matched up with tight ends this year, it's it's been some safeties, some corners, sometimes a linebacker. What have you seen from those matchups in, in previous games that, that you can take into this one? I think when you turn on the film, the first thing that strikes you is that, man, they are a really good football team. They are disciplined. Uh, they do what they're supposed to do. Not only that, they're, they're super athletic as well. So um, they, they pose a really good matchup uh, problem for us to look at and to kind of go across the board and make sure we have a really good game plan going into this game. Next will be Jeff Spiegel. Jeff? Hi, Miller. You'll have a lot of good football stories to tell your kids and grandkids. When you tell them you played with a Heisman Trophy winner, how will you describe Devontae Smith to them? Um, I think I'll describe Devontae Smith as a, as a fighter. Um, but, but in the ultimate sense, um, a guy that, that continued to put his head down and go to work no matter what, a guy that was continually about his team, a great teammate. That's how I described him to my high school coach the other day. He asked me about Devontae Smith. Uh, he wanted to know, you know what, who's the same high school coach as Trevor Lawrence. He goes, man, I want to root for Trevor, but tell me about this Devontae Smith guy. And I said, he is a great teammate. And um, that's something that sticks out to me, not only as a guy who's so incredibly talented and a great player, but also a great teammate. Next, we'll hear from Tony Sukalis. Tony? Yeah, Miller, more about uh, about Dylan. He posted earlier this uh, last week that you know he was going through a tough time this season. How do you help out a teammate uh, when he's going through a time like that? What are some of the steps you guys do to kind of bring your teammates up? Man, Dylan, Dylan's a guy who I can relate to a lot in that sense. Um, I had an ACL just like he did. And, and everyone you think comes back and you hear all this, well, you're going to come back bigger, faster, stronger immediately. And you just don't all the time. Um, I struggled coming back from my ACL a little bit. It took me a while. Honestly, it took me two good years to feel like myself again. And Dylan and I have talked on and off a lot about just uh, enc encouragement, man. You know, sometimes you don't always feel like you used to, but you can still play better, and you can still be better than the player you were. Um, so we, we talk a lot about that, actually. Uh, as a guy who I've had an ACL, and I think I'm old here, so I try and impart the little wisdom I have to these guys who have been here uh, not quite as long as I have. Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yeah, Miller, you've been around here for a while, and there's a lot of talk about legacies of teams and uh, teams that have uh, – 2018 was one of the best teams that they came around here and didn't win a championship, so it kind of loses some of that legacy. How, how much is that – you know, are you thinking about that with this team and, and what you hope this legacy of this team will be? Um, I mean, honestly, I haven't quite thought of the legacy of the team. I know Coach just mentioned a little bit how we have the opportunity to do something special uh, that no one's ever done before. Um, but honestly, I think everybody's just kind of focused on Ohio State, as, as cliche as that sounds. I don't think anybody's looking forward to, oh, what a legacy we could have. Uh, we just want to kind of do what we can do today, not necessarily what we could do down the road. Um, Charlie Potter, Charlie? Yeah, hey, Miller, I uh, just want to ask you about Sark. Just how happy are you guys for him to, to get the job at Texas, but also the fact that he's able to stick around and, and finish the season out with you guys? It's awesome. Um, we're, 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 we're excited for this game, and we're focused on this game. We're glad he's going to be here and, uh, and be a part of that with us. Like I said, I mean, we're super excited for him, and that's a great opportunity. But I know he is, and so are we, both focused on Ohio State and, uh, and what's to come and, a, and what is a Tuesday practice today. So. Uh, that's first and foremost, but we're, we're super excited for him. Brian Davis. Yeah, Miller, kind of, kind of along those lines, you know, schools from all over the country try to poach Alabama assistants and 
analysts and whoever to build their own staffs. What is it about y'all's internal formula or magic or recipe, whatever word you want to use, that other people so badly want to steal and recreate? I think it's the fact that we win, um, first and foremost, but it's the, the system and the process that, that coaches instilled in not only as players, but every coach that comes here. Um, there's a reason you get coaches from all walks of life, young coaches, old coaches, coaches on the back end of the career, their front end, um, that want to come here and learn under Coach Saban, and, and people want that. Uh, people want Heisman Trophy winners and, and championship games and just to play really good football day in and day out. And um, I think people are trying to get a taste of that from Coach Saban, honestly. Next letter from Nathan Baird. Nathan? Ooh. Miller, just as a, a fellow athlete, uh, what is the thing that impresses you the most about Najee Harris? And Najee's one of the hardest workers we have on the team. I don't think people appreciate – that guy does a lot of work. <laughs> and especially outside of our time here, he does a lot of work. But I think physically his balance and, and flexibility are the two things that impress me the most. Um, just the balance to stay on after a hit, to hurdle someone and continue to keep running. Um, that physically is what's most astounding, I think, about his game. Tim May, Tim, you're up. Yeah, I was just wondering, Miller, uh, if you had to describe, uh, nobody probably knows Nick Saban better than you do from a player standpoint, as long as you've been there. What, what is his magic? What is his secret? What is the uh, potion he, he spreads around you guys? Um, like I said, we've everybody hears about the process, and I think, in, in really simple terms, it's it's kind of the ability to be excellent uh, in everything you do one day at a time. Not necessarily trying to look ahead, but be excellent in what he's going to do today. Uh, in the task at hand, um, and and he does that better than anyone, to to be excellent every day at the task at hand, and no one does it better consistently. Tony Gardeman, Tony. Well, I wanted to ask you about Ohio State's linebackers. They play four of them quite a bit, and any three of those guys could be matched up with you. What kind of problems or issues do they present for you as a tight end? Uh, anytime you play, you're playing in the, the national championship game, you know you're playing really good players, and this is no exception. Um, they're old, they're veteran players who know exactly what they're doing, and then add on top of that, like I said earlier, they're really good athletes. Um, they can strike and get off blocks really well, and they kind of run the show back there for, for the defense. And so we kind of know what we're up against, really good players, veteran players, and we have to practice and prepare really, really well to uh, be successful. And that's kind of the mindset right now is practice and prepare the right way. So. Hopefully, we can uh, play how we want to. Next to me, Joseph Goodman. Joseph? Hey, Mark. Um, thanks for taking the time. What are you going to take away from Nick Saban's leadership to apply to the rest of your life? That's a lot. Of, that's a big question. <laughs> um, I've been here for five years. I've heard a lot of things that that I'll pocket for the rest of my life. But like I said earlier, it's just the way he goes about uh, his life. And he does just attack all the little things with the same ferocity and intensity that he attacks the big things. Um, whether it's how he's scripted goal line or how he's coaching the national championship game, it's done the same way. Um, I really do believe that. He, he is better at the little things than anybody else. Thus, he's better at the big things. Um, that's, it's simple, but really, really hard to do. Lucas Weiss. Lucas? Hey, Miller, thanks for taking the time. What's John Mechie like as a teammate, and how has he grown over his time with the program? And Mechie was a guy not a lot of people knew about until we played the spring game, and he has like eight catches and like 140 yards, and everybody's like, this John Mechie guy's got to be pretty solid. Um, and it's been fun to see him kind of to grow and develop and, and mature a little bit. Um, you've got this loaded receiver room year in and year out. Um, and so some names get glossed over. But Mechie's the guy this year who's man, put his head down and gone to work uh, all summer. It's not like we had the weight room open or anything. But I'd, I'd see him at a field here or there and um, just, just working his butt off um, trying to, to find a place in this offense. And I really think he has. Um, by the way he works and puts his head down, he's fun and energetic to be around. 
Um, a guy with a lot of energy and a smile on his face. So he's, he's fun to have on the offense. And our final question for Miller comes from Steve Mouton. Steve? Miller, uh, congratulations on getting to the championship game here. Uh, if I can't ask you an old man question. Um, so you, you mentioned about Coach Saban and what, what kind of influence he's had on you. I've, he I've heard from former players and current players on how much Nick Saban jokes on the field and the practice field. So I'm wondering through five years, maybe the cleanest joke you can tell us over the uh, right, right here on the press conference or how much of, of the jokes is kind of, does coach need to get some fresh material on his uh, banter there in the practice field? <laughs> I, um, he definitely needs some new material. I was talking to, to Ronnie Brown the other day, uh, another Cartersville alum and, and he mentioned a joke Coach Saban said to him when he was in Miami, and I was like, he used that the other day. <laughs> um, and it's been a while since he was in Miami. But uh, Coach is a lot more lively and a lot more jovial than I think people just assume, the way he carries himself, especially on screen. Um, and he's a lot more fun to be around than, than, than people take him as. People take that we have no fun, that he's no fun. Um, but he, is, he thinks he's funnier than he is, but he, he's pretty funny. Um, and, I don't know if I have a joke to share. Josh Maxson's laughing at me in the back, but uh, that doesn't make it not true. <laughs>